Hi, I'm David Weinberger um, with the Center. It's my complete uh, pleasure and honor to uh, introduce uh, Craig Newmark um, of Craigslist to a very informal, but by the way, webcast uh, session. Uh, so you should just be aware of that, and uh, you know, whatever you're saying will be recorded and used against you. Um, Craig, as you all know, has a very special place in the history of the internet, having been one of the earliest people to, to throw his trust into, into us, onto people, and having it uh, work out beyond anybody's, anybody's expectations. Um, besides the, the list of what you know, you may also know about Craig's uh, philanthropic activities as well as some political and uh, media-centric and just a lot of interesting stuff. So we're very lucky not only to have Craig here today, but to have Craig on the, uh, on the net. So welcome to the Berkman Center. And our, what we usually do, and I think we should do, is go around quickly. People say who they are, a little line of attribution, and then we'll throw it to you and, and sure. throw it open whenever you want. So how about I'm Jonas Van Hogog. I'm a history researcher from the Netherlands. Uh, Irina Lubinaro, Madrid, Montreal. Anna Wilson, I'm a Creole Velocity. David Marshall, Berkman Staff. Caroline Mullen, Berkman Staff. Marshall Lewis, undergrad. Andrew Berkman Staff. Tony Lynch, uh, Berkman Staff. Chris Babbitt, uh, clinical fellow here at Berkman. Becca Cassidy, Berkman Staff. Um, Ed Popko, uh, Berkman uh, Assistant Group. Jim Zanelli, uh, Creole at Velocity. Kimberly Keith, Creole at Velocity. Dan Colasparo, Berkman Systems Group. I'm Anthony Cameron, French Air Velocity. Sean Fitzroy, a filmmaker and freelance video producer for Berkman. Sebastian Diaz, a Berkman Geek. <laughs> Amar Asher, Berkman Staff. Uh, Robert Sars, Berkman Center. Jennifer Sabatour, a uh, student for the West Coast. I'm Victoria Stadner, Berkman Fellow. I'm Rue Bellis, a uh, first year law student. Debbie Bray, first year law student. Ruben Rodriguez, Cornell for law student. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. There's different ways I can do this. Because normally when I'm talking to folks, just by talking a bit about a history of Craigslist, that illustrates a lot what we're about and why things work. I will uh, typically spend a few minutes talking about some of the things I do outside of Craigslist. There are some things that are just uh, distinct and that sometimes uh, get conflated, uh, usually because I've screwed up the way I've articulated something. Um, but I'm uh, happy to talk to, uh, well, to speak in whatever way you want, just to start with questions if you so prefer, or to, to, you know, to direct it in any manner that, uh, that you'd like. Uh, what, do you, what would you like? I like the history. And Dave is all about history since he's seen so much of it. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> well, I figure with both twittering and all that, we're both just trying to regain our youth, you know, and it's uh, tragic, but uh, that's what you do. You don't think it's going to happen to you, but somehow, uh, because, yeah, I reflected, I, in June I was back on my uh, alma mater campus, this Case Western in Cleveland, and my, the dominant emotion uh, and, and reflection that I had was, uh, I was such a nerd, and uh, I would have been better had I... Uh, Oh, let's say in, in, uh, engaged in uh, socializing a lot more, because I got a good education, but uh, it was better than I needed. But anyway, the deal with Craigslist, and again, history, and I'm going to try to adjust the level of detail as you need. I, I can get more or less technical for the, uh, for the uh, tech population here. Maybe some of it is pertinent, but uh, in 94, I was at Charles Schwab back at that point. And my big contribution was evangelizing the net, figuring that most brokerages of any sort would do business that way someday. Because back then we had a guy who brought uh, the NCSA server into the uh, company and the Mosaic browser. And uh, that worked out, uh, you know, that was pretty cool. But I would go around showing people, uh, even Usenet news groups and the well, as examples of early virtual community. And as observing them, I saw a lot of people helping out a lot of other people um, in very generous ways. So I figured uh, early 95, and I should, I figure I should give back something, because I had taken so much advantage of what I had seen. So I started a simple CC list for events, arts and technology events, uh, stuff like Joe's Digital Diner, 
which was a big spaghetti dinner, and then people were doing new forms of storytelling using uh, multi <laughs> the latest multimedia, which at that point was pretty much anything where they hooked up a Mac to a, an LCD projector was new, but they could tell stories with illustrations in a nonlinear way. And actually this was pretty good and uh, yeah, useful in ways that I probably never uh, will understand. Um, then, uh, and also there was something called the Anon Salon, which is a fundraiser for climate theater back there, you know, San Francisco. Now it has more of a Burning Man crowd, uh, you know, component, and I'm uh, not exactly the burner type, but, uh, you know, it's still pretty good and pretty vital. But I would tell people about this stuff. It uh, got set, passed around word of mouth. Again, this is early 95, the beginning of the dot-com boom. So I was lucky. Um, and, you know, people uh, kept asking me to be, to be added to this mailing list. People suggested new categories of stuff, like, uh, oh, apartments. That was my suggestion, actually. Um, jobs, stuff to sell. Maybe you guys could drag in some chairs. That's okay. Yeah. Um, there's oh, there's uh, chairs here. I'm sure this feels comfortable up here. <laughs> um, but the deal is that, so people started suggesting stuff, my CC list kept growing, and I was using an old email tool called Pine. You know, character mode, no point and click, easy on your hands, no, no way to transmit worms or viruses. So I was plugging away, uh, and at 240 email addresses in the middle of uh, 95, it, it started breaking, because that's an awful uh, long character string. Okay, so at that point I had to give the thing a name, and I was going to call it SF Events, since it was still basically an events list. And people around me were smarter than me, saying, hey, we already call it Craigslist. Keep calling it that. It's personal and quirky. It's a brand. And I, at that point, really didn't know what a brand uh, is. Uh, I learned quickly, but they were right about it. Um, the deal is that, you know, in our culture, there's the stereotype of a guy in high school, plastic pocket protector, thick black glasses taped together. And in my case, that cliche is literally true. I didn't belong to the AV club, but I did belong to the debating team, which is worse, because it creates dangerous illusions about the uh, effectiveness of uh, logic and reason. And I labored under that delusion for uh, many years. And uh, yeah, the nerd thing, you know, it's one can uh, acquire some social skills, but you're still a nerd. And I'm comfortable with that now. I've accepted it. <laughs> um, but anyway, there I was, you know, again, later on in 95, this thing keeps growing. And, you know, all my, uh, all the database is basically uh, emails and email folders in Pine. And at some point, suddenly I realized that, oh, I'm a programmer. I can write code which turns emails into HTML. You know, I can reach in for the subject or whatever. And that worked out... Uh, you know, and that worked out pretty well. I had instant web publishing. And over the next few years, when it was just me running this as a hobby, you know, I would make refinements to the software. I would think that whenever, uh, oh, whenever uh, something started taking, a task started taking more than an hour a day, I could usually write some code to automate it in part or in whole. And that, uh, that was pretty good. You know, so I would do that, and that, you know, kept things pretty good. At the end of 97, I hit three milestones uh, more or less simultaneously. Hit about a million page views per month. Uh, not bad at that time. That's a million. Um, tangentially, I'll mention that we hit a billion in August of 2004, and now we're heading towards 13 billion. About 50 million unique visitors a month. Uh, that's our guesswork based on what we see in the free measurement sites like uh, Compete or Alexa. I do know that the measurement sites all vary very widely in their estimates. 26 people are at the company. Um, okay, I also, Microsoft Sidewalk approached me. Again, this is around December of 97. They asked me to run banner ads. And I figured, uh, I don't like banner ads. Uh, many of them are just too dumb and they slow a site down. And I don't need the money since I'm an overpaid programmer which is not unattractive. Um, so I figure no banner ads, and you know, years later I said, hey, no pop-ups. And that's okay. 
Um, and then some folks approached me about running the thing on a volunteer basis. And that seemed kind of uh, good because it was chewing up some of my time. And uh, I'm not on 24 by 7 or anything like that. So uh, that I figured that was a pretty good idea. And uh, that year, 98, uh, didn't work out well. Uh, the volunteer thing didn't work partially because the volunteer operation only works when you do some strong leadership and I was not providing it because I was uh, like working for a living. Um, however, people at the end of uh, oh, at the end of '98 approached me and helped me get out of my denial about the uh, my need to exert some leadership. So in '99, I made the thing into a real company. You know, and that meant doing what you do in the U.S. Uh, you know, corporation papers, actual corporate governance, that kind of stuff, some financial controls. And I did a uh, mediocre job at it at best because, uh, you know, we kind of limped around for a while. You know, we were able to pay people to do things. So things were solid in that sense. But again, I was uh, doing a job which could be generously described as mediocre. And frankly, I got lucky in one regards. I hired this Jim Buckmaster guy who's uh, a full foot taller than me. We are like a comedy team. And uh, you'll see us, uh, yeah, if you see us together with pictures where we're at eye level, you'll see at my request that I'm in the photo that I'm standing on a box. Uh, but anyway, I hired him, and he's, he's a really good manager. I, uh, people help me understand that as a manager, uh, I suck. And Jim is much better, and that's the way things have worked. He's continued, or he's continued a number of our traditions like the deal, the way things, a lot of things worked, were that, again, back in 95, uh, people would suggest things to me, like those new categories, and then I would uh, try to figure out what suggestions made sense, and then I did something about them, and then I listened more and acted on suggestions. And that's a condition, that's a well, cultural uh, part of our culture, which we continue to this day. Back then also, I realized that I have no design abilities. But I know to keep things simple, and that's why our site is as simple as possible. Um, and also in 99, I figured, well, I'll ask people, hey, how should we uh, pay, you know, pay the bills and do a little beyond that? Um, and they said, sure, charge people who already paid too much money for less effective ads. And specifically, there was some consensus to charge for job ads, to charge employers and recruiters, not job seekers, and then to charge uh, real estate people, like agents. And we only charge uh, apartment brokers in New York City uh, for apartment listings, uh, where real estate, you know, there is a blood sport. And they asked us to charge them to cut down on certain varieties of scam, but to also eliminate the, uh, the perceived need to post and repost. Because back then I realized, uh, I saw programmers talking about our, our mutual surprise that people would uh, pay fairly generous amounts of money for the exercise of our skill, programming, which, uh, oh, which we consider fun. And from that I generalized to nerd values. Once you uh, make enough to live comfortably, including providing for a future, uh, after that you don't need a lot more. Uh, it's more fun to change things. And that's worked out pretty well. There was a question? You already answered it. Because I'm so smart, aren't I? <laughs> um, uh, and the deal, okay, so, you know, there we are, 2000, Jim takes over, starts to run the company on a much more serious basis. Because oh we are a serious business. The deal is that we evolved something which we you could call a business model, uh, an MBA wouldn't, but it's basically we can do well as a business by just uh, treating people well and, you know, trying to do a little bit of good. And just by coincidence, in my case luck, in Jim's case skill, we managed to follow through. And the years subsequent to 2000, just slow, continuous uh, progress, um, in the middle of 2000, uh, we got a lot of requests for new cities, so we added the first five in the middle of 2000. Um, New York, LA, and I think Boston was one of them. We also made, I remember one uh, uh, big mistake in the middle of 2000, 
we uh, anonymized all uh, emails that were on ads. You know, you, the mechanism exists today, but we just unilaterally introduced it for all email addresses as you see them on ads to uh, that way a temporary relayed email address. What that meant was that if a spammer got that address, it would only be useful for a little while. You know, not bad, but people said, hey, they didn't want that. They wanted the choice because sometimes your email address is a kind of personal or commercial branding. So that's, that's not bad. That worked out. Uh, the guys, uh, I was traveling at the time too, but they were able to turn it around the change in a couple days. Uh, so that's pretty good. We try to stay nimble and uh, fast. Sometimes difficult when you're getting conflicting uh, feedback from people. The worst case of that is when it comes to uh, animals and uh, ads relating to pets or back, so-called backyard breeders. Uh, because some people hate the idea of that and some people like it. But it's resulted in bickering, which in some cases has uh, crossed the line into a criminal harassment. Because people feel very strongly about that stuff. And, uh, well, and in, in the customer service team, we've had the, uh, the adventure of uh, dealing with the police in new and unexpected ways. Um, just to be clear, I am a, uh, in Craigslist now, I am a customer service rep. Uh, I'm founder and uh, technically I'm chairman of the board and I do have some real corp corporate governance responsibilities but I spend uh, my time generally in, in customer service and that's been true for going on 14 years. Uh, that's too long uh, so that's why I'm going down to half time on it. The deal is you sometimes see some really ugly things doing customer service. Sometimes just, uh, well, about a month ago, we saw a surge in ugly, uh, re really ugly racist material regarding the election. And that subsided somewhat, but uh, it's still worse than uh, we'd like it to be. But that takes uh, something out of you. So again, half-time customer service now. But the deal is that if you email Craig at Craigslist.org, that's me. And if you, uh, even if it gets sent to the spam filter, spam folder, I will probably find it. Uh, and the first thing in the morning is a bad time to send something to me since that's when I have my heaviest customer service workload uh, east and west coast and that's when the spammers have done the most so it's most likely I'll miss something in the spam folder um, I've only regretted giving out my email address once uh, and not so much just giving it out as not saying I would respond with a form letter this was on the view and I had about 250 emails by the time I got back to the hotel room with another 100 to follow. The only really frightening experience though was sitting next to Star Jones. <laughs> so that's the you know, customer service there. Over the last uh, several years, maybe more than several, we've begun to understand what makes us work, why we're successful. A lot of it has to do with that uh, business model, if you'd like to call it that but also the notion of this culture of trust we have. I mean, our user community realizes there are bad guys out there, but they're a very tiny percentage of the population. Um, and people look out for each other, and that works uh, pretty well. People, uh, you know, we have this flagging mechanism. You flag some, you, if you can flag an ad, if you think it's wrong for some reason, if other people agree with you, and flag it for removal, it's removed automatically. That's a voting system, and like any form of democracy, it's flawed. Uh, like the quote is, uh, democracy is a lousy form of government, but it's the best we've tried. And I uh, don't think Churchill is writing much anymore, but uh, John Stewart uh, got Jefferson to write for uh, the forward to his book, so uh, we may get a quote out of Winston anyway. Um, John Stewart also made a, co a great comment about the uh, prevalence of uh, crooks or crazy people on the net saying that uh, you do hear more from extremists or whatever because moderates have stuff to do <laughs> and that's why he's one of America's most trusted newsmen part of the best political team on TV and <laughs> the deal so we trust our community so we've given them this much power over the site and again uh, what seems to work the way we've gotten this culture of trust is by well, from the beginning, acting on shared values, which we've only come to recognize 
in the la and our recognize and articulate in the last several years. The deal is, uh, no matter where you're from, throughout the whole world, uh, the people who are not crazy think that you should treat people like you want to be treated. Uh, not just take that sentence for granted, but to follow through with it. Hence, customer service. Uh, then there's corollaries to that, like uh, live and let live, and just sometimes give the other person a break. And these are, there's nothing profound in this stuff. It's just the hard part is following through, you know, as flawed human beings. We, you know, we try to follow through and uh, do what we can. There's almost nothing as distractive as having your phone vibrate in your pocket. If only I could find that, but, oh, there we go. No, that's the wrong way. Your phone. There we go. Anyway, <laughs> um, the deal is so we try really hard on that. Uh, we, it works, and we're trying to listen to people still. At this point, uh, novel suggestions are rare, as you might imagine. Um, but the idea is that the, we decide on new cities based, on, based primarily on uh, requests for them, usually electronic. Um, people uh, mail them in or set them into, put them in our discussion boards. When Jim's in the mood, he uh, looks at uh, the cities and how much serious internet usage is in them. And then uh, he'll fire off templates when he's in the mood you know, for new cities. We're up to 567 now, 55 countries. Sometimes we uh, figure things out, like I, I got a lot of verbal requests, not electronic requests, for Ramallah, so I talked Jim into that one. Uh, and now and then we figure out some request uh, from the community without an explicit request, like, uh, well, like uh, some years ago, we figured out, oh, uh, thinking single moms don't get a break, but we figured parent, all parents need babysitters. Hence our child care section. So we are capable of some independent thought, but uh, for the most part, what's on the site is based on community feedback. That's what you see on the site as uh, visible. Um, again, uh, almost everything about Craigslist, on the surface at least, is uh, based on what we hear from people, and that's even true in my very first three years. Uh, I have no vision at all, but I uh, know how to keep things simple and I can listen some. Underneath the covers, um, you know, for uh, years, since 99, we've been, uh, our architecture is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and Perl, specifically Mod Perl, if anyone cares. Um, in the first few years, like we were on Solaris systems and uh, like a borrowed Linux system. But uh, now, in each of our server farms, we have, I think, around 250 cheap PCs running SUSE Linux. That may change, you know, the uh, boxes or the uh, distribution, who knows. Uh, but the deal is that, you know, I'd written version one of our software, uh, you know, way back evolving starting in 95, and then um, wrote version two. Um, yeah, wrote version two um, in late 99. Um, yeah, instead of using Pine email folders as our database, uh, seriously, I used uh, MySQL, and then I stopped coding because my time was more valuable on customer service. That's when we started getting a team of uh, sysadmins and uh, programmers, all of whom are uh, more talented about it than I am. But customer service is a great fit because it signals our commitment to customer service. And that, uh, that ain't bad. Um, and the deal is that now what we do is well, we have a whole bunch of uh, web-based tools. The primary uh, platform for the tool usage is Firefox. And we do use a very advanced email tool, which is very fast and, again, uh, virus-resistant. The advanced email tool, which I'm normally running, is called Pine. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when I speak in a very technical audience, that's hilarious. But uh, that's seriously the tool that's our primary email tool because, again, it well, means I'm not point and clicking, so my chances of RSI or whatever are uh, smaller than if I was using something else. Now, I do have some video on quickqik.com where I ask uh, Marissa Meyer from Google about it and because she, she uses Pine, and I say, that's hot. <laughs> you know, Chris, there's the Paris Hilton of the Internet factor, by which I mean me, not Marissa. But... Uh, 
You also see a couple of, uh, I, in there I have a couple of SCC guys talking about policy, and I try to talk them into reenacting a wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah, I did, couldn't convince them to actually do it for one of them as a standing commissioner and the other as a former uh, chairman, so. And uh, I uh, couldn't think of better ways to get in trouble. So to this day, again, we just, uh, okay, we keep plugging away with the stuff I've talked about. Again, my role, customer service, half time. I need a break. Um, but again, I've reflected on many of the reasons why Craigslist works and, you know, what's become our real mission in this. Because we are a good example of the way people collaborate in mundane ways to make things happen. Not bad. And then reflecting further on that, um, about six, seven weeks ago in uh, New York, on Washington Square Park, on um, my way to one web day, you know, I realized all of a sudden, oh, what I am really is a uh, community organizer. <laughs> um, and that's one of the best expressions of grassroots democracy. Uh, not bad. To be technical, since we're at Harvard, I'm uh, more of a metamorph organizer. Because here I am helping people connect, getting together, with the very attractive feature that to do this, I don't have to remove my uh, backside from my chair. And again, very desirable. Um, so I figure, you know, so f increasingly over the last several years, I've been helping out in other areas. Not philanthropic. I mean, nothing about Craigslist from my point of view is altruistic. Nothing is noble. Nothing is uh, pious about it. The deal is that, you know, there are people, you know, lots of people around who just spend a lot of time giving another person a break. Not bad. So I figured I should extend this to other areas, some expected, uh, some uh, unexpected. I'm involved uh, helping people smarter than me with the future of journalism and media. Like I've been up at the Neiman Center here, that kind of thing. Um, we're in... Uh, you know, I, I, well, I met people like, uh, I met J Jeff Jarvis and Jay Rosen and a lot of folks who are doing new things to try to figure out what's happening. Jeff uh, just sponsored a few weeks ago a future uh, of the news business kind of summit at uh, City University, and there was a lot of good stuff there, a lot of people doing new things and a lot of discussion about how do you pay for reporting, particularly investigative reporting. And, uh, in fact, I've, uh, since I'm working a bit with the folks at the Berkeley Journalism School, uh, I'm saying, hey, maybe they should talk. And, cause they, and they're also, they've started some really impressive uh, uh, hyper-local stuff, like uh, for the Mission neighborhood in San Francisco or for some parts of uh, Oakland in California, you know, Oakland across the Bay. Uh, so I'm doing that kind of stuff. Um, in terms of uh, new, well, new aspects of governance, I'm thinking, well, I'm out of my depth there, but I'm working with a lot of people because I'm reflecting that, uh, you know, what's different about the Internet that's changed our lives? Because, you know, people have worked together face-to-face -face for a while, you know. People, uh, you know, and, the, you know, the Romans had a form of representative democracy. Um, it didn't uh, have a written constitution for the most part or uh, checks and balances. They were pretty crude. But they did okay for quite a while. Uh, but, you know, towards the end, the Republic had situations where rich guys would start wars for uh, profit and vanity. And, of course, that can't happen with our system of checks and balances. <laughs> but uh, the deal is there's stuff to be learned from all that because even, uh, you know, in recent centuries, recent years, people would get together to make stuff happen. Our founders created a system which... Uh, was, cut, was very flawed in a number of ways, but as systems of representative democracy created 230 years ago, it was a good start. Some of those problems were fixed, but the de and they left some room for grassroots democracy where people could get together and make stuff happen, but only in the hundreds or maybe thousands at a time. Because face-to-face -face communications is generally better than online. You know, because uh, there's no substitute for all the uh, nonverbal channels you got when you're, uh, you know, when you're talking to each other. Uh, but face-to-face -face doesn't scale. Well, with the Internet, 
We've got, uh, you know, much more distributed forms of communication. We've got thousands, hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of people working together to make stuff happen. And I think this changes entirely the nature of our grassroots democracy, wherein grassroots efforts can uh, complement uh, representative democracy to address a lot of the remaining flaws and just to make stuff happen. The Dean campaign pioneered this, with, uh, and we can never give enough credit, I think, to Joe Trippi and Zephyr Teachout. And uh, the deal there, too, is that now this uh, other campaign has had some success enlisting uh, millions of people who would normally not want to be bothered with politics. That includes me, because my natural tendency is to be a couch potato. But the idea is that it even got me involved. In fact, I'm still wearing the stupid Barack watch. I have to decide, you know, is I, should I remove that on the 4th? Maybe I remove it on the 20th. I don't know. But the deal is now that there are people working together now to figure out, well, we got this big networked grassroots thing. How do we take that forward to make it real uh, so that on January 20th, the nature of governance changes? Because um, I've been saying that's, that 2008 is the new 1776. And since I do have a rich fantasy life, I'm saying that 2009 may be the new 1787. Now, of course, I could be entirely full of crap about this, but uh, like the uh, guy says, I'm as stubborn as the garbage bags that uh, time will not decay. Uh, and if you look up the quote, you'll see someone express in uh, uh, poetry uh, a pr what I consider a prayer regarding all this. I'm sure David will be tempted to look it up if no one else will. Yeah, if not, I can give you a clue later. But uh, the deal is so I think big things are happening and, and, and in all sorts of ways. Um, that are pretty good, like uh, Wikipedia, the observation I make about that, but you've heard all the rest. But it used to be that the guys with power and uh, money and guns who won the wars got to write history and our narratives about ourselves. Well, with Wikipedia, everyone is a shot at doing that. And that's also a change in the way that, uh, well, it changes the whole course of human history, from my point of view. And I don't think we're just at an inflection point now, but we are at a genuine singularity where things are changing in big ways. We're kind of living in a time machine fantasy kind of time. Because sometimes you wonder what would happen, you know, if you could take a time machine back and see what was happening in 1776 or whatever. But we're living in a time like that now. It's happening faster than any historic milieu because the internet accelerates everything. But this is pretty cool. So I'm trying to pay attention to what's happening and to play a microscopic part in it because I need to get out more often. So that's my idea of a hobby. In addition, like so, part of the uh, big movement here is this whole idea of accountability and transparency. You put online everything a government is doing and you can see, if you can see how the sausage is made, you can raise the level of hygiene. For example, if you see where lobbyist money goes, how it's being used, what favors they get, uh, contracts or legislation, well, once you see it, you can start to uh, do something about it. The best disinfectant is sometimes sunlight. So I'm involved with Sunlight Foundation, who's created a network of sites to uh, document what's going on you know, they're building uh, databases where it's easy to find stuff. Not bad. You know, I don't get a lot of phone calls, but for some reason I'm getting them all now. <laughs> um, so I'm involved with that. Uh, I'm involved figuring that as an increasingly middle-aged guy, appliance reviews get me excited. So I'm uh, working with Consumer Reports. To be real clear, I'm on the board of Consumers Union and, for that matter, Sunlight. Uh, mundane stuff, but real stuff. You know, I, I was involved a little bit in uh, San Francisco's 311 program. You call up a number or eventually report on their site that you got a pothole you need fixed, you get it fixed. 
uh, mundane, but it's part of everyday governance. Uh, in my uh, fantasies, I apply that to all levels of government. Uh, that could mean something. So the, uh, this kind of stuff, uh, a good chunk of it, which is in the Obama platform, the idea is it's potentially real, and I think we're going to see it happening for real uh, next year. But in this role of community organizer, you know, I can give a little bit of adv advice and a little bit of money since I know something about online organizing, uh, but I get involved in groups and do what I can to get the word out um, to help out. Because sometimes there are groups of folks who have been uh, treated badly, sometimes uh, by the White House. So I figure, well, uh, one group of uh, people who've been treated pretty badly are uh, veterans returning from Iraq or Afghanistan and, and their families. So I'm now uh, increasingly involved with the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, IAVA.org. I was at a board meeting uh, yesterday, I mean literally yesterday, assuming my sense of time hasn't collapsed entirely, which is possible. We don't have seasons in San Francisco. Uh, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm getting increasingly involved in their efforts. For example, to get the new GI Bill passed and now to, to increase their uh, medical attention, the Veterans Administration has several hundred thousand claims unprocessed. That needs to be accelerated and I'm suggesting that the purpose of screening claims is sometimes to minimize uh, fraud and I'm saying, uh, hey, maybe we shouldn't care about that because there's literally hundreds of thousands of people veterans and their families who are suffering because their claims uh, are awaiting processing. Yeah, the deal there is, uh, you know, if I'm uh, saying something maybe a few people will hear and then that message will spread. As a nerd, perhaps I shouldn't be doing anything relating to promotion or communications or public relations. Uh, that's a crime against nature for one of my people to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm doing it anyway because, again, uh, there's lots going on here and there's a lot of uh, interest in people working together and doing more stuff and the idea of uh, people getting more involved in service makes a great deal of sense. I've read what people say about the millennial generation, that there's a, there's a new uh, civic generation here, kind of like my parents' generation, World War II and Depression. And man, we really need it right now. I do uh, have one request of the kids, you know, that you stay off my lawn. Uh, but aside from that, it looks like we, uh, you know, we'll have a uh, new kind of administration in place, and that matters. The message gets out, and uh, man, it's going to help us out in customer service to some extent because, you know, sometimes uh, we have to help out with a. Uh, criminal situation on the list and the deal there is that when we talk to a cop well we find we don't really need to remind them of a uh, due process and all that for some reason we get lucky in that regards we never get hassled about that which is good uh, because we've been for years behaving as if constitutional rule of law was still in effect over these uh, past eight years um, Many of you are too young to remember when we had a rule of law in this country <laughs> and an active uh, Bill of Rights. Um, although, of course, some of you uh, may remember when the you know cons Constitution was passed, but uh, but <laughs> but the idea is we behave as if it was still in effect, and again, the Constitution will be restored, you know, on January twentieth. So I'm looking forward to that but we've been behaving as if it was still an active document uh, through these years. So that's, you know, that's uh, Craigslist and again some of the stuff I've been doing outside of Craigslist. Um, you know, if you look at my blog, uh, cnewmark.com, um, and, and you'll see a lot of my stuff condensed there. Either I'll be amusing myself or promoting the efforts of someone doing uh, really smart stuff that's effective. You'll see that my focus is on people who are effective at getting stuff done. I uh, may lack uh, the patience I should have with people who mean well but don't know how to get things done. And uh, they, 
um, may consume a chunk of your time without uh, results, and I, uh, my great fault, frankly, is a lack of patience. On the other hand, too, while I like the sound of my own voice, only for so long, and that time is ending now, this is a good time for more questions. Really, young guy. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, are there any ways that uh, Craigslist has just gone in directions you couldn't have imagined, or any categories that you, hmm. you know, <clears throat> could never have foreseen? Uh, for the most part, well, big chunks of them. I guess... Uh, I never tried to foresee them, so it's hard to answer. <clears throat> I had to be uh, happy. Well, I had to have my arm twisted regarding personals, because um, I figured there would be problems. But actually, they've done much more good than uh, problems, like misconnections. And I, you know, well, I get routinely asked, uh, invited to weddings, and sometimes asked to officiate. I have to remind them that by virtue of running Craigslist. That gives me no power to legally perform marriages. <laughs> uh, seriously, actually, I have had that at high and fall times. Um, and just surprise categories, I can't think of many specifically. In a way, the whole thing has been a surprise, because again, I, I have no vision. I just responded, for the most part, to feedback. That's the first three, four years. Jo uh, Jim does that now. And uh, it's all very surreal, but that's life now. Started to succeed um, over ostensibly the same things that happen on Usenet, and more people would be uh, disposed to use Usenet in the mid 90s. Well, uh, part of it, I've never been asked this variation of the question before, but um, part of it is simply that everyone understood email or just casual browsing, which is what we were about for uh, years, whereas news groups, no one provided a nice simple interface for that until Google did it after buying, I think, Deja News. And by then, uh, that ship had sailed. So, uh, Usenet, and Usenet news groups, you know, were uh, commonly uh, ad spammed really badly. And uh, no one took any responsibility for addressing that, not normally. And uh, we have a problem with ad spam. And like last week, we announced uh, litigation against some of the people who sell ad spam software, figuring that was a good way to do it. Because we're not litigious, we don't like uh, using the lawyers, but uh, this was the right way to do things. And actually we do have a pretty good firm. Um, but that's it, the, the Usenet news groups illustrated uh, the tragedy of the commons. Uh, last time I looked, which is a while ago, uh, there were uh, big uh, news, new news groups who would just be overrun with ad spam. Some aren't, usually the moderated groups, but uh, still it's, uh, they're, and they're still useful in a number of cases. For that matter, people are still active in, on the well, including me, well, as active as I ever was. But, uh, but uh, I think the news group ship uh, did sail. Has it been a problem keeping Craigslist simple on its face, like with these requests for features and requests uh, for other things. Is this something that you tried to set as a goal, or is this something that the culture has set? Um, keeping it simple is just something, I guess, that's habit. So that that's easy. There are times when we have to debate whether or not there should be a certain category or not. Or, uh, like in the discussion boards, should we uh, require people to register with a viable email address? Um, just, you know, to, me to minimize abuse. And uh, those, some of those decisions are a little difficult, but the simplicity thing, you know, I don't know how to do things except to do them simply. And I think the same is true of Jim. The software underneath is more complex, but, uh, you know, that's something people don't see. I don't know if you addressed this question earlier because I just came in, but um, about a week and a half ago, you guys announced this deal with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And this is sort of a quasi-government, quasi-non-government um, organization. Um, and the changes you, you announced seem to be more aimed at providers of adult uh, erotic services and not children. So I'm wondering sort of how consensual was this deal between Micmac and Craigslist? And, well, and how much were you sort of talking to doing this? Well, Jim was the guy who was involved in it, so he knows the details. 
The deal is that there was genuine abuse of our site. There were a number of uh, proven cases of some really ugly abuse of minors, and our big concern was just dealing with that. And since we're not law enforcement professionals, we got help from people who uh, were the real experts, and we uh, took their advice. The deal is, again, there is that kind of abuse, and we got to help out uh, how we can. Um, and we, you know, we've just started charging for people posting in erotic services, and we'll be contributing all the uh, profits from that to uh, philanthropy, seeing that that's a good way to do it. We're even going to have uh, the auditors uh, keep an eye on us to make to verify that all that's happening. Yeah, beyond that, frankly, uh, Jim felt very strongly about that, and he's the CEO, so he handled that, which, uh, frankly, I uh, appreciate. Yeah, because, yeah, right now, uh, I just, again, frankly, dealt with too much ugly stuff for too long, and uh, some of it I'm really tired of. Like, unfortunately, this I saw a really ugly image that I can't get out of my head. I'll blame you, of course, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, if you know how to work around Tor proxies, I could use it. If we can use a hand on that. Sometimes bad guys, uh, bad guys do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the deal is that, again, personally, and again, speaking as a guy who's been a member of the EFF for, I'm guessing, around 15 years, like, there's issues like anonymity. Like, sometimes you need anonymity and badly, like, for whistleblowers. And by the way, I'm way oversimplifying. Sometimes you need accountability from people. How do you balance that? Uh, I sure don't know. We've made the decision to go more on the anonymous side. But uh, well, here's one case in terms of real governance that uh, congressmen tell me they don't want to be subject to mass email campaigns where everyone's just filling in their address and sending a, a form email. They disregard those in large part. But what they want are emails written by constituents, at least people that they have some confidence probably really are constituents. So, uh, you know, there are, we now see evolving sites which actually do some good faith authentication, not real authentication, but some good faith stuff, that a person really is a uh, constituent. And uh, then a, an email from a person who's a constituent will have a lot more weight than a mass spammed email. So. How do we move ahead with that over the forthcoming years? So there's a case where some authentication and accountability is needed. Although even uh, me, without much thinking, I can think of ways where people might try to game that system, and that's serious. So we are talking about uh, moving towards different well, ways to, uh, oh, to balance anonymity and authentication. But again, we do need anonymity. Uh, as a kind of check and balance against uh, oppressive government, and again to, to allow whistleblowers to get to uh, blow the whistle. And it'll be interesting to see what happens on January 20th, because there are a lot of career people in Washington. Uh, a lot of them have left because they couldn't stand it, but a lot of them have, have uh, toughed it out and are interested in having a government again that works. Again, those of, you know, those of you who are just like new in college or whatever, if you're like 20, you know, you haven't really lived as an adult with a government that functions. You know, and that's uh, going to change. I'm sorry, was that too cynical or too hopeful? Um, <laughs> there was one more question here somewhere or? Okay. Um, do you think your exposure to some of the uglier aspects of Craigslist, as you just mentioned, has led you to uh, see a, a more expansive role for government? Um, I've gotten more balanced, but mostly because I've been doing customer service and I have seen a lot of suffering. Um, so I'm shopping for a label, and perhaps you guys have new hip groovy labels. Um, but uh, so now the best label I can figure is libertarian moderate or moderate libertarian. I don't really know because I. I uh, am, you know, increasingly interested in public-private partnerships. Um, I'm increasingly uh, interested towards, towards, I see now, you know, like, where market solutions don't work, like for healthcare in this country, you know? So, like, I uh, don't, you know, if there's going to be more regulation, it has to make sense. What's uh, worse for me is I'm involved in the net neutrality debate where I see uh, people... Uh, 
basically misrepresenting net neutrality as a form of expansive regulation. Unfortunately, I've seen the CEOs of two telecoms just come out and lie about it, and that's uh, disconcerting. Um, and so I have to blog something about that. As I get more exposure to the sausage factory, well, this here's an important, I see how lobbyists work. And my first exposure was thinking, oh, these are real bad guys, and that's wrong. Most lobbyists are just trying to get their clients a break, you know, which is a legislative and political reality. You know, depending on what you're doing, you may have to have representation. Google is learning that the hard way. But most, again, most lobbyists are just trying to get a fair break for their clients. Some lobbyists are pure public service ones, like the guys at the Iraq Veterans Group, or the Sunlight Foundation people, or the Consumer Reports people. There are, is a small number, apparently a very small number, of really predatory lobbyists, and it's not fair that they are bad actions give the whole profession a bad name. So repeating, most lobbyists are okay, just trying to do a job. There are a small number of bad actors who have tainted the whole profession, not fair. Um, and uh, that uh, appears that will be changing over the next uh, few years. I and mean, we've just started. It's going to be hard to overcome the, uh, the effects of many years of abuse. But we'll see what happens there. But again, I see how in some areas, I have seen lobbyists or related people trying to, trying to pick a fight like net neutrality to prolong the argument because one, one thing is that when you prolong the argument, you can charge more hours. And I'm told that that's actually a, uh, a real uh, technique. And uh, a technique which, well, um, I've spoken to people at telecoms I speak to their abuse handling people, that kind of thing, and I'm saying, hey, the two sides aren't that far apart. There's disagreement, for sure, but uh, not that far apart. And if you uh, get rid of the people trying to pick a fight, you can come to some accommodation. And I'll have a feeling I'll be uh, caught up in that next year. Yeah, the problem is I may have to go to, uh, Detroit, uh, to Washington, and I think I... It's just too humid there. You know, I'm not looking for a job. You know, I'm committed to customer service uh, forever. You know, but uh, I have a feeling uh, my uh, life will change in some ways. Something you want to tell us about your role in the new Obama administration? Uh, I don't think I'll have one, frankly. I talk to people who are uh, who matter, who are getting stuff done. I was part of a couple of the uh, Obama committees. Um, but, uh, you know, and I'm ready to, uh, to help out, but, you know, I'm, uh, helping people already pretty well in what I'm doing. You know, again, not looking for a new job. I, uh, do speak out as necessary. Like I pointed out, again, since I see, well, across the country and, and frankly the world, I see, pe have it, I see people who share many of the same values. Again, this notion that you want to treat people like you want to be treated. And, you know, I see that's a genuine small-town value. And I also see, well, big cities are collections of neighborhoods, which is to say small towns. So small-town values, big city values, same thing. People everywhere have areas of disagreement, but small-town values and big city values are pretty much the same thing. People are generally eager to help each other out, and if someone's trying to pick a fight between small town and big city people, they're basically uh, doing so to get attention and maybe to sell a book or, you know, get ratings. You know, it's basically a scam. And that's uh, no good. I see David's fingers reaching for the keyboard. Um, other questions, folks? Um, well, we'll have the youngster ask the question. <laughs> about uh, expanding uh, the cities and stuff like that for Craigslist to something like over 500 or so. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the emphasis, though, still seems to be towards a local level instead of yeah. being able to do, like, searches for used autos throughout the New England or something like that. It still seems to be geared towards city or at least regional um, 
regional breakdowns. Is that a conscientious direction you tried to head in with um, them and keep that? or Initially, just uh, following our gut. Mm -hmm. um, but then realizing that there's, you know, a cliche about uh, think globally, act locally. Yeah. And then we live in a neighborhood, you know, and we connect, well, we connect with people around. Some, you know, because this is a, this encourages face-to-face -face communications. We need the more global mechanisms, too. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we're doing okay with the local stuff. And that, uh, that works out pretty well for people. Because uh, it took me a, a while to get to figure it out. But Craigslist, in a way, is a flea market. It's a marketplace, kind of like a flea market or a mall or the Roman Forum or the Greek Agora, the Mid-Eastern Souk. People get together to do commerce, but in a way, really, to socialize. I mean, I should have figured this out, observing that my mother loves to go to flea markets. And in fact, I like them, too. But uh, Penelope Green from The Times talked about uh, our site being a marketplace in the ancient sense chaotic, unruly, and vividly human, and that's all about uh, local stuff. And she, you know, she was right. That was the, perhaps the smartest bit of commentary, except, of course, everything that David says. Who had a question? <laughs> yes. I believe I heard you once say that your, your team, your company, if it's a company after all, has never had a meeting. Did I use something like that? Um, we minimize meetings. You know, we've uh, actually had some, uh, but it's pretty rare. Um, yeah, and like I will see like uh, at times a, a, uh, several of the tech people getting together to uh, talk through some change, but we don't really have meetings in any real way. And the, I've observed personally that uh, first, a meeting of more than six people is already going to be dysfunctional, just small group communication theory. But also, uh, effective communication in meetings is tough. Part of it is that brevity is the soul of wit, but uh, people don't teach that. Of course, now, as a result of my saying that, I'm sure the Harvard curriculum can now be rewritten to include that. Um, and you know, this will also reflect my, my, again, my biggest uh, vice, which is that uh, I'm not as patient a human as I should be. Um, but, but that's actually 14 years in customer service, so that is, except it's a great deal of impatience. That well, yeah. you know, people people have observed that uh, my uh, answers may be uh, excessively brief. A lot of my answers may be just be thanks, because really that's all. Frequently, all someone wants to know is that you heard them, and that's uh, you know that's not hard. Um, there are s some people. Yeah, the, a practical problem is that no matter how well you explain something, they're not reading what you wrote. And I'm in one of those right now, you know. And I don't know what, quite what I'm going to uh, do to uh, do with that. Maybe I just delegate upwards, because even you know, remember, I'm customer. I'm a customer service rep, part of a team. My boss is the guy who runs customer service, and uh, <laughs> and so I uh, in the position where I can kind of delegate up, and I hesitate to do that because it doesn't feel quite right. Um, it's like a the lessons of democracy, I, which I got from Mr. Sholsky's history class in roughly, I think, uh, 70, 1970, because I'm old. Um, I actually remember that stuff and remember the attitude. You know, it was Marston, New Jersey, Washington spent a couple winters there, so somehow it all, it all sinks in somehow. something, uh, what do you think will be the future of uh, uh, two service uh, communications business? Do you uh, think it will stay the same or do you think it will change? Uh, this is the part of law that says that if a, a website acting as a, I think a carrier isn't uh, liable for what people say on the site, provided they take some responsible measures. Um, and uh, that's pretty good in itself. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, of course. I suspect some clarification of it might help, but uh, it's pretty good, and I think it'll stay, possibly be improved. The irony of the thing is that we've seen a couple cases where uh, uh, there were a couple lawyers who wanted to, who were thinking of suing us, who didn't know anything about the law. And I'm here. I'm speaking without knowledge of the law, but I recommend that if you're going to be a lawyer, you should know the law. <laughs> 
This is my look where I'm looking to see if there's any other questions, even if people hesitate. Okay. Have you ever had a ne negative experience with the police or law enforcement where you've had to push back? Uh, nothing to my knowledge. Clint has handled a lot more of these than I have, so he may have seen it. Uh, the only f one is, uh, well, I can think of two funny episodes. The first time called by the FBI, they're asking if I know that we have an ad for plutonium on the site. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line, the punchline, is that someone got a stern talking to from his parents. <laughs> the, uh, the other time was when, I think it's Cambridge police, maybe Boston police, came calling because there was some uh, burglary-related episode somehow relating to our site. They had no clue what we were about. Um, so they came knocking, you know, in somewhat suspicious mode. But I didn't read them as suspicious, so I just showed them what the site was about. They got it pretty quickly. And uh, I don't know, a year or so after, I was actually asked to speak at the uh, Police Officers Association to talk about how we operate. Because frankly, uh, you know, the cops are catching on to this stuff, and in surprisingly positive ways, and they just don't want to be jerked around. You know, they want someone to try to respond to search warrants or whatever in some kind of timely way, and in their own way, they just don't want to be treated abusively. And uh, the idea is that to us, that's customer service. You just respond to people in a decent way, and that works. Um, because sometimes uh, bad things happen, and you know sometimes you know other people will waste their time, and we try not to. I think it was two days ago I got a call. There was another uh, gag posting about someone selling a baby, and even if almost certainly a joke, they got to follow through. Same thing with uh, threats against, uh, let's say, presidential candidates, um, and uh, you know we. You know, we prefer not to have our time wasted. They don't want to have their time wasted. But uh, you got to do the right thing in any case. And uh, fortunately, again, I uh, don't handle much of that these days. But my phone number is deliberately spreading across the country for cops anywhere. And uh, they just, again, they just want to know that they're not going to be uh, jerked around. So how do you, again, balance the need to do the right thing with you know, for cops, for victims, and in a way for the country in terms of uh, online individual rights. Um, again, Mr. Shulsky's lessons uh, stuck with me in a way that he had worked. And, uh, you know, how do you balance this? How do you do stuff? Well, that's one reason I've been a member of the Electronic Frontier Foundation for a long time and sent him money, and uh, that ain't bad. That's EFF.org. Everyone should join. Was there a question over here, uh, almost? Okay. I'm just going to reach into that. I was wondering if there's any country streets and you don't let people search by specific subsection of okay. cities for, like, apartment searches. Uh, is no way to search sure. for just a section of Boston well, or something? We should have a way to search multiple cities in a given category. We don't have it. The reason has to do with the search facility in MySQL, and it's, uh, it's expensive. It chews up a fair amount of server time. Uh, and... We don't want to slow other things down to make that faster. So the guys uh, talk about it. They have some ideas of designing and building our own. But uh, there are bigger things that they're working on. We will be, you know, as we hire more tech people, maybe we can shake loose some resource for that. But it's, it's just pragmatics. There's other things we want to do, too, that, uh, that we will get to sooner or later. And... Uh, yeah, we do. We are hiring, uh, oh, programmers, sysadmins, and for that matter, a little customer service. Um, yeah, you know, in San Francisco, because all of us, are, you know, are at the moment in an old house in a commercial strip in uh, the, the San Francisco neighborhoods. Um, we probably will move downtown towards the financial district, just because we can't, we've been looking for years, several years, for uh, a big enough space in the neighborhoods. Can't find it. You know, it has to be zoned right and all that. And uh, so we will uh, at some point move downtown. Which is not too bad because San Francisco almost has good public transportation. <laughs> we maybe should be, since we've kept Craig over an hour, we maybe should be wrapping up. Um, okay. 
you know, it's Craig and Craigslist.org. Uh, <laughs> afternoon, much better than the morning. <laughs> and the work weekend is good too, since I uh, work uh, every day. Well, thank you so much for, for coming by. It's my pleasure. <laughs> You know, like that at the MIT thing I just spoke, uh, there was a guy, a, a computer science professor, I think, or related, who uh, whose work I read when I was doing my master's work in roughly 75, and I told him I was glad he was still alive. <laughs> <laughs> that's 1975, not 1875? No, no, that's, that was a good year, though, 18. <laughs>